AMD explains why the X3D chips are dying and it's unsatisfactory yet again. The Chevy Bolt is going bye-bye and AMD releases what is probably the most impressive processor that I've seen in my years. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, April 26, 2023. And we're going to start off today talking about the X3D chip dying issue that has been cropping up across the internet over the last few days. We initially reported on this on Monday with regards to physical indentations that were appearing in X3D chips and their motherboards with some speculation that it was due to memory overclocking. Then yesterday, we got a few more details, and then now we have some official statements coming out from Asus and AMD on the topic, as well as Derbauer putting a few things through his paces and proving that this might not just be affecting X3D chips, but potentially all Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. So we're going to start off talking about the Asus statement where they say that the EFI updates posted on Friday contain some dedicated thermal monitoring mechanisms we've implemented to help protect the boards and CPUs. We've removed older BIOSes for that reason, and also because manual vCore control was available on previous builds. We're also working with with AMD on defining new rules for AMD Expo and SOC voltage. We'll issue new updates for that ASAP. Please bear with us. So ASUS at least acknowledging the core root of the problem. It does appear like this is tied to memory overclocking and the SOC voltage that we're seeing on the CPU, specifically with the X3D chips. We know those are hypersensitive when it comes to voltage. When you push them too far, they die very quickly. And it's appearing like that's happening on stock BIOS settings because of some issues and miscommunication between AMD and motherboard manufacturers. But AMD's statement on this issue is a little less caring and a little more like what we saw with the 7900 XTX. They're gonna kick the can as far as they can down the road, not acknowledge the real issue, and just pass it off as some random speculation on the internet. So they officially said, we are aware of a limited number of reports online claiming that excess voltage while overclocking may have damaged the motherboard socket and pin pads. We are actively investigating the situation and are working with ODM partners to ensure voltage is applied to Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs via motherboard BIOS settings are within product specifications. Anyone whose CPU may have been impacted by this should contact AMD customer support. This is nearly exactly a one for one replica of the statement that they made when the 7900 XTX coolers were failing. They are aware of a limited number, making sure to downplay any sort of significance to it, of online reports, making sure that it's not actually giving credence to the fact that this is really happening, and then saying contact customer support if you have an issue, which is what they told people to do for the GPUs and what ended up happening there is that the customer support was not properly trained on this issue and told people to go fly a kite. You're not getting a refund for your GPU until they made a stink about it on Reddit and then they actually got AMD to finally give them a replacement card. This doesn't feel like they've learned anything from that incident. It doesn't look like they're actually directly communicating with what the issues are, but instead making it seem like it's a hypothetical, it's potentially there. Asus acknowledging, yes, there are some issues that are applied with Expo and SOC voltage problems when you actually enable memory overclocking. But what AMD's statement only talks about is X3D chips, which if you go and watch Der Bauer's video, he shows off the fact that a 7900X died in the exact same way. Additionally, we showed off in yesterday's video that there was a 7700X that died in the exact same way. So it appears like it's the entire Ryzen 7000 suite that actually has this problem with weird motherboard BIOS voltage voltage settings that are creating this issue on these chips. And AMD is only acknowledging half of the problem. And even then they're making it hypothetical and like it's not really there. I know whenever I criticize AMD for their communication, people ask me what do I expect of them? And I think it wouldn't be very hard for them to say, we take these reports very seriously. It does appear like there is an actual issue that's out there. Please refrain from overclocking for the time being until we can come to a solution with all of our motherboard vendors. If you had a chip affected by this, we will take care of it, no problem. We'll respond more with technical details once we have them, but we are aware, we're investigating, and we're gonna do something about it. Which, I know that's what it seems like their statement says, but it doesn't 
actually come forthright and say that they are on the side of the customer, but rather that they're just investigating things. It's more passive language rather than active language. And I think it's something AMD needs to get better at of making sure that they're ensuring the customers feel like they're taken care of when something like a $450 to $700 brand new processor actually runs into major catastrophic issues. You need to know that the company has your back, especially when it's something that was AMD's fault. And it actually looks like it is because there's reports coming out that what happened is AMD put out these details for what should happen with Expo parameters on the motherboards and Asus and Gigabyte implemented those without actually configuring any sort of the SOC or memory controller voltages and made it so that the stock settings were potentially pushing the SOC up to 1.5 volts in Windows, which will kill the chip. So AMD releasing bad BIOS versions and again, lack of accountability on AMD's side, them just leaving it up to We'll fix it if it's uh, good to contact our customer support, which hasn't gone well in the past. If their customer support has been good from day one, maybe I wouldn't be so critical. I just think with all of the controversies we've seen from AMD over the XTX GPUs, they probably should have learned to have more direct communication with their customers. I don't like to see that this is happening, but the takeaway is here, if your motherboard manufacturer has not updated the BIOS to actually be safe, please disable any sort of expo overclocking. Do not run your memory above the standard DDR5 4800. Keep it at stock settings because this is officially overclocking when you run expo and it's leading to these issues. So take care of your chip. Don't let it die until your motherboard manufacturer comes out with stuff. Let me know if this has affected you. I've seen reports of people commenting on past videos that we've done on this, that this has happened to them. I wanna hear from you. How widespread is this? Do you know anybody who's had their chips die 7000 X3 D or the regular 7000. Let me know down below in the comments while I let you know about today's video sponsor, Silverstone, and their FDP 02 external cooling fan adapter bracket, which allows you to cool your PC more effectively thanks to the fact that it goes on the expansion slot covers on your PC, allowing for you to get more airflow and more cooling on your system to potentially either help out your super hot graphics card or potentially just to add an extra exhaust fan to make sure that you're moving the hot air from your PC case on out. Or you could potentially flip that fan around and cause it to blow direct cool air onto the GPU to make sure that it's getting the freshest air possible and it's not taking it in from your radiator on your CPU. You can have it set up for exhaust or for intake to make sure that you're meeting your cases and your graphics cards needs for thermal management. And they also have the FDP-01, which allows you to cool the VRMs on your motherboard better because it attaches to the rear 120140 exhaust fan that you have in your PC. You can install an extra 80 mil or 260 mil fans to blow air directly on to your VRM, but whether you need to cool your GPU a little bit better, cool your VRM a little bit better, Silverstone has the FDP 01 and 02 to help you out with that. So check them out at the link in the video description. Make sure your system's staying cool. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video. And you're definitely gonna need to stay cool when you're running Joblo 4 later when it comes out in June. And we finally have the PC specifications for the video game, which are slightly different than it was for the beta, especially when it comes to the storage department. The game has ballooned in size because it's not just one portion of the game. So the minimum specifications are really easy to run. If you're trying to do 720p 30, they're recommending an FX8350 with a GTX 660 or an R9 280, but you will need 90 gigabytes of available space. For medium spec to get it at 1080p medium 60 FPS, you're gonna need an i5 4670K with a GTX 970 or an RX 470. A high spec for 1080p high resolution at 60 FPS, you're looking at an 8700K or a 2700X CPU with an RTX 2060 or 50 700 XT, and then if you want to run it at ultra 4K 60 FPS, they're recommending the same CPU setup, but then 32 gigs of RAM, an RTX 3080, a 40 series if you want to run DLSS 3 or a 6800 XT. Again, all of those taking up 90 gigabytes of space. Let me know what your system is going to run Jablo 4 on. Are you going to be playing the game when it launches? Let me hear from you down below in the comments, and we'll see if we hear from Reese today. There were some comments yesterday saying that they'd fire somebody so inconsistent. Let's see if that motivates them today. Yo, welcome Welcome back to GFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I'm Reese, your resident deal guy, and as you can hear, I'm sick, and I gotta keep my voice low so I don't cough my lungs out. That means today we're gonna speed run through things because we have the Corsair HS65s. These wired 7.1 surround sound headsets are going for only $39.99, which is $30 off. And next up, we have the XFX Speedster Merc 310. This line of AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTs are currently going for only $787.16, making it $162.83 off. And that's it, those are the deals you can 
can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news and I'm going to go get some more sleep. Cheers. And just to be clear, I'm not talking about firing Reese like Chevy is actually going to be firing the bolt because it not OK, not talking about the bolts catching on fire. They're just going to stop producing them. GM coming out and saying that their most popular EV is going to be done with the EV and EUV versions of the bolt, even though they're expecting to make more of them this year than they ever have coming in at 70,000, even though it's the best selling EV outside of Tesla in the United States. They're just going to be moving on specifically because they need to move on to their new battery technology with Ultium. And so they're gonna be converting the plant that the bolts are made at to start producing the Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra starting next year. And they're gonna replace the price point of the bolt with the upcoming Chevy Equinox, which again, are gonna be based on the brand new Ultium platform. Chevy just saying it's old technology. It's not something they wanna to continue to produce. And especially with the sordid history of the bolt and how many fires it has due to the batteries. And then at one point, the carpet's catching on fire. I, I like the price point. I like the Bolt. I just don't know that if I, I could ever bring myself to own one. But what I can bring myself to own, and I just was telling Kyler, Kyler, didn't I say I want this? What? The Rog Ally. I am planning on it. Asus coming out and saying that they know when they're going to be launching this bad boy and that the Steam Deck is not the reason they're launching it. They've had this in production for five years and showing off the various different prototypes that they actually have been making in order to get the right fit and feel for the upcoming handheld console and that it would still exist, but perhaps not as soon as 2023. Valve has been a central figure in the PC gaming industry for decades and has a special place in the hearts of gamers, including us. And while we have had the design for a Windows based PC gaming handheld device ready for some time, we were waiting for something that could offer the ultimate gaming experience, something that would meet the performance demands of gamers. So this is part of them fully announcing that this is going to get launched on May 11th, and we'll get a lot more details about the price point and I guess availability then and how many different versions they're gonna be releasing of it, whether or not it's gonna have additional storage, likely not. But the comment that they made with regards to how much it's gonna cost is for sure below $1,000, which is not especially inspiring. A bunch of tech publications actually got to check out the ROG Ally in person. You can check out the video that we have linked in the video description from Engadget, where they see that this is actually a mighty impressive device. It's not just two YouTubers who got to check it out. A lot more people got their hands on it. They had a blown up version of the console right there. But I do agree with the idea that that under a thousand dollars seems really fishy, it, like nine ninety nine for potentially the the regular version that I think a lot of people are expecting. Because one of the big announcements that came out with the ROG Ally is AMD's new handheld chips, the Z1 and Z1 Extreme, and I am incredibly excited for these chips. We've already seen what something like the 780M integrated GPU can do, and AMD coming out and saying that they are making official dedicated versions for handhelds, and I have to tell my heart to be still because everything about this screams this is insanely good and we've seen benchmarks kind of confirming that that's around where it is so you're getting the z1 and the z1 extreme the z1 comes in six cores 12 threads four rdna three cores going up to 2.8 teraflops in performance and then the z1 extremes eight cores 16 threads with 12 rdna three cores going up to eight 0.6 teraflops of performance. Let me remind you that the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X are in the 10 teraflop region. Getting 8.6 out of a gaming handheld is just obscene. Obviously, they are confirming up to, and that's gonna likely depend on things like power delivery in the gaming handheld, cooling setups, the TDP rating of the chip, but the fact that they're gonna have the ability to even push that seems mighty remarkable to me, and I am excited for every single moment for it. But they also came out with benchmarks for the Z1, showing off that in the Z1 and Z1 Extreme, the Z1 being in red, the Extreme being in orange, you can expect at 1080p native resolution, low settings, but again, this is a handheld, you can get 60 plus FPS in AAA titles. You can get high refresh rate in any sort of esports environment that you're playing in. And then if you turn on things like FSR or 
Radeon Super Resolution, that FPS mark goes up even further because it's rendering at 720p and then going up a little higher. So these are the benchmarks for the Z1 Extreme. You can see that it gets over 60 FPS in Red Dead 2. The Z1 gets about 41.8 with RSR. So there are some increases. The Z1 likely gonna be the chip that gets the ROG Ally down to a price point that makes a lot of sense. The Z1 Extreme is gonna be the chip that I desperately want. The Z1 probably gonna be a lot closer to the Steam Deck in actual performance. The Z1 Extreme is exactly what I want Valve to put into the Steam Deck. It is the chip that just seems so good. I've seen benchmarks of it being able to play Doom Eternal very fast, Cyberpunk getting 60 plus FPS. But one of the compromises that I personally wanna see made when it comes to a gaming handheld, a lot of the things that Valve did with the Steam Deck make a lot of sense to me. I don't think we need 1080p at seven inches. I'm perfectly happy with 720p. And if you put the Z1 Extreme with the 720p display, and then you turn on FSR, oh, with that 120 Hertz refresh rate on that display, I would love a device like that. Obviously, I can lower the resolution on the game, which is probably what I would do. I, I don't need to go past 720p medium settings when I'm playing on a handheld, but I want it to be at at least 60 FPS in AAA titles. Seeing that the Z1 Extreme could potentially do that, I'm excited for it. I want to know, are you excited for the ROG Ally and its May 11th launch event? Are you planning on picking one up? If the Z1 Extreme is $999, let's say the base model Z1 comes in at $649, is that the price point you needed to hit does that make you happy would you consider that or are you going to wait for third party models potentially for valve to make some move now that amd has announced an official chip for it let me know what you think down below in the comments and i'm going to let you know i'll be back for hot news tomorrow